This is the easiest way. This is how to prophesy. This is to, how to learn how to prophesy and speak forth truth. So we're going to get right into the Spirit of the Lord is so willing to speak through us and we need to learn how to prophesy. Now the Apostle Paul is the one that I'd like to concentrate uh, on his writings in, in a lot of these, these sessions because he was caught up and he saw the other side. So he was writing from Revelation and he met Jesus himself. He said he received all the gospel that he preached from Jesus himself personally. And so there was a, por a, a portion of time where he was gone after he was converted he disappeared for a while and he talks a little bit about this and he said he was in the uh, region of Saudi Arabia and was on the mountain of God and he received the revelation and was caught up and we we learn about this in some of his writings so one of the purposes of prophecy is to speak forth the known will of God and so God has a will that he wants known and this could be uh, f what we call foretelling. Not so we think of prophecy as being foretelling, but see, a lot of prophecy is not telling the future. It's only a, a small portion of prophecy. Prophecy is actually just uh, speaking forth truth and and speaking forth the will of God. Even if it doesn't happen, we still have to say it. We still have to speak to the mountains. Even if they don't move, we must keep speaking. We must keep prophesying. We must keep saying what God says. Even if people don't listen or if it doesn't seem to happen, we need to continue to proclaim the gospel even if people don't accept it. A lot of the mysteries, a lot of the things that are in the Spirit, are being revealed and they're being um, they're being revealed to people in this day that are starting to speak prophetically they're going to start speaking from the spirit of prophecy so the spirit of god comes on you and burns within you and on you and then you speak forth so if you want to understand prophecy in its simplest form that's what it is it's when you can't but speak it out but there's power there is an anointing, there is an endowment, there's some sort of impartation that's inside of you that needs to come forth. And, and we're going to see a lot more of this happening, especially among the youth. So in verse 8, uh, Paul says this, this super abundant grace is already powerfully working in us, releasing all forms of wisdom and practical understanding. And through the revelation of the anointed one, he unveiled his secret desires to us, the hidden mystery of his long-range plan, which he was de delighted to implement from the very beginning of time. And because of God's unveiling purpose, this detailed plan will reign supreme through every period of time until the fulfillment of all the ages finally reaches its climax when God makes all things in heaven and on earth new through Jesus Christ. Okay, so here, here is, is the summation of this level that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about God's plan and what, what it is that he does through people about that plan. So first of all, he reveals his plan. And then he has people speak it. So God reveals and then we speak. So prophecy is partially revelation and then partially foretelling. Okay, so we're going to go through Ephesians chapter 1 um, and in depth now. And I'm going to show you how this is the easiest way. This is how to prophesy. This is to, how to learn how to prophesy and speak forth truth. And, and this, is the, this is how you develop this gift of prophecy. So the Spirit is really willing to speak forth what He wants to say all the time. And so you can't just restrict you know, to certain people to prophesy because really, if we are speaking forth truth, if we're speaking forth the Word of God, then, then we are prophesying. So if we testify about Jesus, 
uh, the book of Revelation says that this is the spirit of prophecy. The same spirit that testifies is the same spirit that prophesies. So uh, let's get into this. In chapter 1 of Ephesians, uh, we're going to start with verse 3. And it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Okay, so here is how you develop the fire inside of you, the fire that, that actually comes out of your mouth when you prophesy, is you start to meditate on the revelation that Paul has given. This is the easiest way to learn to prophesy, is you start to meditate on the fact that Paul is saying that God himself is blessed and worthy to be praised. And when you say that, you're literally speaking forth by the Spirit because that's what's being said in heaven, that God is worthy and he's, he's, he's uh, worthy to be praised. And he is, he is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you proclaim that, it is saying that Jesus came in the flesh because Jesus was sent by the Father and he came in human form. And so the, the demons don't like it when you acknowledge that he came in the flesh. An evil spirit will not acknowledge that because that's how they were defeated. So we have every spiritual blessing and we can have the gift of prophecy. And this, this heavenly realm that, that we are involved with is, is because of Jesus Christ. He's given us access to that. So think about these things right now because inside of you are these amazing gifts. And I asked the Lord, I said, I desire because Paul said to ask and desire the greater gifts and that gift to prophesy. So I prayed and I asked God for that gift right off the bat when I became a new Christian back in 1980. And it has been 41 years now at the time of this taping. And, and I prophesy all the time because the Spirit is always wanting to say something. So in verse 4, it's, Paul says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. This is how God thinks. He, he thinks this way. He selected us. Then he made the earth. Then he put man in the garden, and then he knew that all the generations that would ever exist would come forth. And so he wrote books about every person, every name, that every, everyone that would ever live, and he acted as though they would all serve him. And it's very important to think this way because this is what Paul saw on the other side and that's why he's writing the way he is here. He's saying that he selected us as his very own before the foundation of the world. Verse, verse 5 says this, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself. Through Jesus Christ, this is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Okay, so here, how I developed my gift of prophecy was I, I concentrate on each word. I, I concentrate on the fact that he predestined and he, he planned us out. He planned this whole plan out lovingly, it says in, in, the, in the Greek language. So he predestined and he lovingly planned this. He adopted us. So you got to think this way. So there's key words here, predestined, and, and, he, and he did it in love, and he also signed adoption papers. So all of us are adopted in. And so when you speak forth the truth and you prophesy, you got to remember that you're speaking forth the fact that everyone, everyone is adopted. But there's, there, there's, there's no reason why someone should go to hell. There's no, well, there's no reason why someone should be healed if he suffered and died uh, and he was, was uh, tormented and he, he received stripes on his back for healing and, and for our deliverance, he was tormented in hell. Then why, why would um, people um, not want to accept that? Well, they got to know it. See, prophecy is speaking forth the truth and you prophesy as though you are the mouthpiece of God. So you speak forth and you say the truth. 
you think about it, it's just like when an angel comes and gives the word of the Lord. He's just speaking on, in behalf of God, on behalf of God, you know, and it's in the first person a lot of times. But that is what prophecy is. It's speaking forth as though it's God speaking. So um, verse 6 says, We praise God for the glorious grace He has poured out on us who belong to His dear Son. Okay, so we, we know that He has given all of this to us. This grace has been poured out. So when you prophesy, when you speak, you talk about that pouring out, that God is an outflow, that He is giving and that we are to receive. And see, this is, this is what Jesus, when he prophesied over Jerusalem the night before um, he was crucified, he said, you know, how I've longed to gather you together as a, as a, as a hen gathers her, her young, but you would not have it. You did not discern your day of visitation. And he, talk, he prophesied about how the temple would be destroyed. And that, um, and, and that there wouldn't be one stone left on another. But see, Jeremiah had already prophesied in Jeremiah 29, 11, that, that God had plans for, for them to prosper and have a good and expected end. Well, you know, who was right? Well, they, they're both right. Jeremiah was speaking forth, you know, what God, what God, God's intention was. So he was prophesying the truth. And so was Jesus. Jesus was prophesying the truth. He was like, he was, why he came was to gather them all together and, and, to, and to, to visit them in power. And he said they wouldn't have it. So Jeremiah was speaking forth what God had planned. But in 70 AD, the, the city was destroyed. Jerusalem was destroyed and the temple was destroyed. This was not God's perfect will. And Jeremiah, what he was prophesying, that was God's perfect will. What Jesus was saying was, listen, you know, it's conditional and you decided you didn't want this. And, you know, but this was not God's intention. So God is wanting to pour out on us and lavish on us all of these benefits. And he has bestowed them on us freely. So you have to remember that is that all these things are bestowed upon us and it's just God's mercy and grace. So when you prophesy, you're prophesying from that mercy and that grace and, and from that outflow that God is giving. So this is another thing about prophecy is that you it's an outflow and it's mercy and grace and it's God giving out to the hearers. And, and it's an encouragement to build people up in the unity of the faith. Okay, so, so verse 7 says, so... He is rich in kindness and grace. In other words, there's an abundance that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave us our sins. So we have this redemption, this salvation, which includes deliverance and healing through the blood. Okay, so the, a lot of times when I prophesy, I mention the blood. I mention the uh, redemption, the deliverance, the salvation. I I talk about forgiveness and being complete. You got to remember that God pardoned us. And so this is part of what is mentioned in this verse. So these are all good things to meditate on so that when you prophesy, the spirit can grab these things. You have to understand all of these words. So forgiveness and pardon is complete. So in accordance with, with what? The riches of his grace. In other words, there's a super abundance of grace that is in heaven and that we will never chop the, the uh, bottom of that grace or that mercy. He's going to be an outflow. And, and when you prophesy, you're prophesying from that same outflow. Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with Warrior Note School Ministry, and I want to announce you an exciting course we are just uh, releasing, and this is called The Mystery of the Prophetic. In this course, we're gonna be talking about some of the, the things that Paul talked about, about prophecy. We're gonna be talking about the spirit of prophecy, which is actually mentioned in the book of Revelation. It talks about the fact that when we testify about Jesus, that is the spirit of prophecy. And so everybody can testify about Jesus. So literally everybody has the same spirit of God. 
God in them so we can all prophesy. But that we're going to be talking about in the course that there is the gift of prophecy, which is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit, and then also the office of a prophet. We're going to be talking about speaking the mysteries, which is what really praying in the Spirit and then allowing the Spirit to interpret you, what you're saying as well. But just remember the most important thing about any gift of the Spirit is operating in love. And remember that prophecy builds up the body and the Apostle Paul was very strong about this. He, he wanted us to speak to the body, especially the fivefold, the, the ministry of a prophet, the office of a prophet. It's to speak to the body and build up. So I know you're gonna enjoy this course. This is one of the most amazing things that God has ever shown me was, was about this, this very subject. And we need it. We need all of you students to be able to prophesy and speak forth the mysteries of God. I know you're gonna enjoy this course and we're gonna make it really affordable for you. God bless, bye-bye.